Hi, everybody. Today, I want to talk to you about the holy oils of frankincense, myrrh, and spikenard and how they will help to merge modern medicine with health, religion, spirituality, and ancient healing traditions. Today, I want to highlight more, not why we need to change into more of an integrative approach into medicine, because I already did that in my last video. I want to talk more about how these ancient essential oils are an example of something that we can use to actually help translate these two languages or these several different philosophies and belief patterns into one common understanding. So specifically, these ancient oils possess scientific evidence that they can favorably influence our physiology and our psychology and alter our biochemistry in favorable ways. And they have these ancient healing, traditional, spiritual roots. So what this means is that essential oils, specifically more of the ancient, traditional healing essential oils, really can serve as a bridge to fully integrate modern medicine with traditional integrative healing practices. Now, if you want more information, you're going to want to stay tuned. And definitely, if you want the resources and to get that previous video that I talked about more, why we need to merge modern medicine with integrative medicine and religion and spirituality, that'll all be in the video description link. So you will have that for your information if you want to dive a little bit deeper or catch up or maybe look into some more details in the research and actually get those references. That'll be all there for you. So first of all, why should we even care about the link between religion and spirituality and health? Well, because it makes a difference. First of all, as a physician, as a practitioner, knowing what drives someone and what their beliefs are is very important to motivate them to change. If someone doesn't know why they want to be healthy or what they're living for, then they're not necessarily going to be very enthused about making some simple yet sometimes not easy lifestyle shifts. Furthermore, if the person themselves is closing off part of that belief pattern to their physician, their physician or practitioner or someone that they're going to for coaching or for some kind of help with their health, won't have the full picture and there won't be as ease of a therapeutic relationship because what they might be saying or recommending might not be in alignment with that person. And that all aside, studies have indicated that someone's sense of purpose, which can be a form of spirituality, is linked to overall healthier habits, decreased risk for mood disorder, stronger relationships, better cognition, and enhanced stress and emotional regulation. So this is why we need to consider the whole person. And it's probably why the United States has sub substandard to be kind, but basically pathetic results as far as where we rank in spending the most amount of money on healthcare with basically ranking last amongst all other developed countries. So we're not getting good results. So we definitely need to shift. If we look at these ancient spiritual oils and we start with one of the most famous and most popular, most famous probably in the research and probably most well known for its roots in the Bible of frankincense, right? It was one of the oils that was brought to the Christ child. It has been deemed the king of essential oils, and that's because it has a multifaceted use. It's been used for various different healing potentials and properties throughout time, okay? The scientific evidence has isolated specific beneficial compounds. If we look at frankincense, there's actually frankincense oils. And three of the most common ones on the market are Boswellia sacra, Boswellia catari, and Boswellia friania. And these all have, these are all different species, and they all have different chemotypes, which means what is the predominant 
chemical constituent in them that serves to be measured to have some sort of action, right? If we're looking at translating ancient healing medicine with modern medicine, we want to get to that evidence-based medicine model of isolating a compound and seeing what it does. Now, we know that essential oils have a synergy and you can't just isolate one thing. It's going to do way more than that one chemical compound, but it gives us a start, right, in what it does. So Sacra and Katari, and Boswellia is a genus name for frankincense, it's the fancy Latin term, they're both high in pinene contents, and specifically they're high in phytonocides, and that's a term used, and it is actually been shown to be beneficial for relieving stress and actually helping cellular defense and repair. Now, if you want more of the terpene factor, Frienna is a little bit higher in terpenes. And terpenes are one of the main constituents in all essential oils, and they have all of those properties that are very wellness promoting. They actually are the different types of molecules that are related to kind of those anti effects in essential oils, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, right? Anti-tumoral. Those are kind of the terpene. Now, Katari, if you have a manufacturer that actually distills it in a certain way, there have been found to have specific products with incensol in them in Baswellia Katari. And this is actually a neurological brain supportive compound. So some people might want to check with their manufacturer to see if their Katari has that compound in it. So this isn't to get you lost in a biochemical soup of frankincense. I'm just showing you that there's variations in the different maybe ones that are on the market so that you can be aware of what am I looking for? Am I looking for more stress relief, more cellular defense and repair? Maybe that would be Sacra and Katari. Maybe you want the neurological booth, so you're going to go for a Katari with Incensol. Maybe you want just an overall well-rounded uh, Boswellia and you're going to get more of the Friana. But I always say, regardless, if it's a good quality frankincense oil, you're going to get some really beneficial physical and emotional boosting with frankincense essential oil. Now, what about boswellic acids and why am I bringing this up? Because boswellic acids are kind of what made boswellia or frankincense extract and frankincense, the plant, pretty darn popular because some of these boswellic acids were found to be anti-tumoral. But it's been a lot of controversy in the aromatherapy essential oil space on do essential oils contain boswellic acids? And initially people said, heck no, <laughs> they are not volatile and there's no way. But it is possible to actually have non-volatiles in essential oils. The thing is, if we look at boswellic acid, I read a review by Robert Tisserant, and I actually am backtracking a little bit on what I had said a little bit earlier about boswellic acids and frankincense oils. If you watch some of my previous videos, I did say it is possible to have boswellic acids and frankincense oils, and that is still true, but there is a caveat to that. When we look at the scientific studies that actually showed that there was presence of boswellic acids and frankincense oils, and these are the studies that are being used kind of to bash about this conflict of, are they there, are they not there? When Robert Tisserand actually went and talked to the authors of that study. It can't fully be extrapolated to generalize to frankincense oils because in order to extract these boswellic acids and get them into the frankincense, it would compromise the aromatic quality and they'd have to distill them at a much longer than normal time period at a much higher atmospheric pressure. And most distillers and manufacturers just don't do that because they want the essential oil and they want it to have a good aroma. So one of the authors said that the paper description of the extraction process was wrong. He corrected it, gave it to Dr. Tisserand and said that there was kind of some conflicts between the editor of the paper and what he actually wanted to present in the paper. So basically, 
yes, it's possible to have boswellic acids in frankincense, but if you're looking more for the property of boswellic acids, you're probably better off getting the actual plant boswellia and then using the essential oils as a supportive for overall wellness promoting properties. So that's a frankincense story and see how there's this big merger of all the science I'm talking about with this ancient spiritual essential oil. So that's pretty cool, right? Now, the second thing is myrrh essential oil and myrrh is a sidekick to frankincense. And again, it has that biblical root. And if we look at the properties of myrrh, I'm going to think of high in sesquiterpenes. So sesquiterpenes are a specific type of terpene, and I won't go down the biochemical pathway for you. We'll save that uh, candy lane another day. But these compounds are beneficial to the brain and nervous system and cellular health specifically. I often suggest myrrh and frankincense, particularly frankincense katari, for some of my clients who have neurological issues and to further support their brain health. Now, both myrrh and frankincense can be diffused and applied topically diluted. Myrrh is a little thicker, so I tend to not necessarily diffuse it in a cold air diffuser or atomizer. I tend more to place it on incense sticks or on cotton balls, or I will actually apply it. It's really good for uh, skin health right? So inner and outer beauty with myrrh. And this, the smell is very calming and obviously good for and soothing for the brain. So that's myrrh and frankincense. And then we look at spikenard oil. And spikenard oil, I just was fascinated by it because there's more research coming out, but there aren't a lot of human trials. It's more traditional use. And then some of these in vitro and rodent studies. And what they found in um, specific rodent studies is that it has very calming properties and they actually compared the compound, a volatile compound in spikenard to phenobar phentobarbital treated mice and they were actually had a similar effect in calming. So that was pretty cool and pretty powerful for spikenard. So it kind of shows you the intensity in rodents and it probably has a similar calming effect in humans. Personal experience totally does. It's also been touted to have heart soothing properties in vitro and also to lower um, or to keep blood pressure in a healthy range. It also is said to have antioxidant properties and also there is some preclinical evidence for it protecting the body from unwanted microbes as well as fungus. And this is similar to myrrh, it's kind of thick. So again, I'm gonna think of more of a carrier oil. I have, I don't tend to use spikenard as by itself. It tends to be in combinations and blends that I buy. And I, a lot of times will combine it with like, um, frankincense and myrrh, um, specifically if someone is really having a hard time calming themselves, I would like to use blends with spikenard in them. And spikenard has been referenced in the Bible and in many ancient tradi healing traditions for centuries. So these plant medicines, I think I've shown you how they can merge modern terminology with this ancient wisdom of these healing mind-body effects, right? We know that they impact our emotions because anything that we smell has a direct connection to our limbic brain, our emotional center. No other sense can we get that instantaneous direct link straight to the brain. So for that reason, I hope that you can take this information and use these essential oils in your health and wellness regime to offer you some support that is really holistic, right? We're, we're getting to the grounding spiritual effect, getting you know, closer to maybe our purpose or connection. Frankincense is really popular to be used in meditative practices or just thoughtful prayer. And you can use them all throughout in different ways when you want to diffuse them or apply them when you're in solitude and contemplating, maybe while you're cooking or gathering, uh, maybe when you're even entertaining, you can have some being diffused for a calming presence in the atmosphere or maybe having a specific book study or something where you want to feel that comfort and relaxed and also boost your brain at the same time. 
I hope again that you found this helpful. I'd love to hear your comments. I will apply or reply to your comments personally. And I'd love to hear from you. Make sure you check out the resources that I have available for you for free, as well as classes that I offer for both practitioners and for consumers to learn more about how to incorporate essential oils to better your health and wellness. I appreciate you very much for taking the time to learn more with me. And I love doing this. I'd love again for you to like the video and share it and let me know if there's other topics that you want to hear about. And if there's certain essential oils you want me to highlight that might not already be on my database. I will talk to you soon. Take good care till then.